Income tax, 2022-2023. Business expenses, car and truck expenses. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Most of this information comes from the Tax Guide for Small Business for Individuals Who Use Schedule C, Publication 334, Tax Year 2022. You can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused on line one, that being income. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula is, in essence, an income statement. But just an outline, the scaffolding, other forms and schedules flowing into it, one being the Schedule C, in essence, an income statement in and of itself, it having business income minus business expenses, the business net income rolling into line one of the income tax formula here, that being income. First page of the form 1040, noting that the Schedule C rolls into the Schedule 1, which would roll into page 1 of Form 1040, line number 8. Schedule C, profit or loss from business, noting it is an income statement in it. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. In essence, with income minus the expenses, we're focused on the expenses side of things here, this time focused on the car and truck expenses. One which often is another wrinkle, another area of difficulty for multiple different reasons. One is going to be because you might have cars and trucks that are personal versus a business. You might be using some personal and some business. We need to break out from business and personal as we have seen in a prior presentation. That's the general concept we need in order to be deducting because it needs to be ordinary and necessary for business to be deducting on the Schedule C. We also have different methods for tracking the use of an automobile. We can track the actual expenses, in which case we have to have the added burden of putting it on the books as an asset and depreciating it, having limitations possibly on the type of depreciation methods for automobiles and whatnot, and then track all of the expenses related to the automobile trying to break out between business and personal and or we might have a more of a simplified method which would be a mileage type of method which would e be easier because normally we would track just simply the miles in that case and then there's a question of well which method would result in more of a deduction which is more of a complicated question than you might think because we could think about that question as of the deduction for this year versus the deduction over the life of the automobile used in the business because then that leads to the question of if i choose one method or the other am i locked into choosing one method or the other or, or are there instances where i can change methods we know that the general rule for for accounting methods is that the iris likes you to stick to a method once that once you have that so you might have restrictions then to go back and forth between methods for tracking the car and truck expenses. Okay, that said, if you use your car and truck in your business, you may be able to deduct the costs of operating and maintaining your vehicle because it is a business expense, you would think. You may also be able to deduct other costs of local transportation and traveling away from home overnight on business. So there becomes this kind of issue in terms of what is constituting traveling uh, and they have this overnight uh, type of, of of thing there to help us with that categorization we might dive into in, in a little bit more detail in future presentations so local transportation expenses so local transportation expenses include the ordinary ordinary legume and necessary costs of all the following ordinary and necessary being those key terms for a business expense in general so getting from one workplace to another in the course of your business or profession when you are traveling within the city or general area that is your tax home. 
So it's not transportation away from your general vicinity. You're moving around your general vicinity, but notice you're going from one workplace to another, not from your home to your primary workplace, which might be categorized then as commuting. So tax home is, is defined later. So visiting a client's customers. So if you're visiting your customers, then you would think that would be ordinary and necessary going to a business meeting away from your re regular workplace and then getting from your home to a temporary workplace when you have one or more regular places of work. So notice all of these kind of revolve around non-commuting miles, commuting being the going from home to your normal workplace. And the idea would be that normal people don't get commuting uh, deductions. Like if you have a W-2 job, so that's so that that would be like they're trying to say commuting may not be part of the ordinary and necessary and all these other stuff then would be so these temporary workplaces can be either within the area of your tax home or outside that area so now we've got these definitions that come into place what's my home for and what's my workplace so that i can determine if i'm doing a commuting situation or a non-commuting situation and if i'm in the general facility of my workplace or if i'm outside of it doing travel possibly okay so local business transportation does not include expenses you have while traveling away from home overnight so those expenses are deductible as travel expenses and are discussed uh, later under travel and meals. So if you're, that's kind of the definition, you're overnight traveling. So still may be deductible, but they're and most likely are if they're for business, but they're gonna be under travel and meals where you have slightly different kind of rules and whatnot with regards to them than here. So however, so if you use your car while traveling away from home overnight, use the rules in this section to figure your car expense deduction. So we're gonna use the, the, the methods here, which we'll talk about shortly to figure the car expense deductions for it, for the travel too. So generally your tax home is your regular place of business, regardless of whether you maintain your family home. It includes the entire city or general area in which your business or work is located. So let me jump to this traveling thing one more time. Obviously, if you're traveling away from the general facility, your general area, then your travel expenses might not be your car. You know, you'd have travel of the air and, and whatnot, taxi and whatnot. But if you are using your car uh, while traveling away from home overnight, so use the rules in this section to figure your car expense deduction. Okay, example, you operate a printing press out of a uh, rented office space. You use your van to deliver completed jobs to your customers. So you can deduct the cost of round trip transportation uh, on between your customers and your print shop. So you're at your shop, that's where your work is. You're going to your customers, driving to the customers, of course, you would think would be a deductible transportation thing driving your car over there. So caution, you cannot deduct the cost of driving your car or truck between home, between your home and your main regular workplace. This is where it becomes messy because that's the commuting miles. So when you're trying to figure out the actual costs, it becomes difficult to do that because now if you're filling up your tank, for example, then are you, it's kind of difficult to say, well, I'm filling up my tank, but I'm just, I'm not gonna count the costs that were related to the commuting or my business or my personal travel versus my business travel. You see where that can get messy. It can get a little bit easier to do that if you have a mileage kind of method, because then you can try to determine the mileage that you used for the commute versus the mileage that you used for the business. So these costs are personal. It's personal. Commuting expenses, which aren't deductible. Office in the home. So your workplace can be your home if you have an office in your home that qualifies as your principal place of business. So now we've got this idea of a principal place of business as a sole proprietorship. Well, what if that's my home? Because my home is the office. So for more information, you can see business use of your home later to, to determine if the home is an office. So example, so you are a graphic designer. You operate your business out of your home. Your home qualifies as your principal place of business. You occasionally have to drive to your clients to deliver your completed work. You can deduct the cost of the round trip transportation between your home and your clients. So now you're driving from your home 
to somewhere else, which you might think would be a commuting thing, personal versus a business expense, but it's not because now your home is your principal place of business. So you, if you're driving to your client from your home, you would think that that would be a, a business deduction because your home is your office. Methods of deducting car and truck expenses. So for local transportation or overnight travel by car or truck, you can generally use one of the following methods to figure your expenses. You got the standard mileage rate, and then we've got the actual expenses. So you could try to track the actual expenses. As we saw, there's some complications to try to parse out the business versus the, the personal with regards to trying to track your gas and all that kind of stuff uh, versus the standard mileage rate, which of course would be a little bit easier, but you still need to track your mileages. And then the, of course, there's the question of which of these two would be most beneficial, not just in the first year, but in years going forward, as hopefully the business continues and you use your automobile within it. So standard, standard mileage rate. So you may be able to use the standard mileage rate to figure the deducting costs of operating your car, van, pickup, or panel truck for business purposes. The business standard mileage rate for J January 1st, 2022 to uh, June 30th, 2022 is 85.5 cents per mile. The business mileage standard mileage rate from July 1st, 2022 to December 31st, 2022 is 62.5 cents per mile. So it's half the year and half the year. That's a little bit messy to calculate, but not too bad. Noting and remembering that these rates are different when you think about a standard mileage rate for the business use than other things you might use a standard mileage rate because they're different parts of the code. For example, medical mileage rate for driving your car for medical purposes on a Schedule A deduction or charitable contributions may have similar kind of concepts of a mileage rate, but they may be different in amount because sometimes those other ones aren't keeping up with uh, inflation to the same degree. Caution, if you choose to use the standard mileage rate for a year, you cannot deduct your actual expenses for that year except for business related parking fees and tolls. So in other words, if you're using the mileage rate, you can't also deduct, for example, the gas. You may be able to still deduct the, the parking fees and tolls, but you're quite limited. You can't do both Otherwise you would be double dipping if you deducted like gas and the mileage rate. So choosing the standard mileage rate. If you want to use the standard mileage rate for a car or truck you own, you must choose to use it in the first year the car is available for use in your business. Here we come with the restrictions in terms of the IRS wanting some consistency in the methods being used. In later years, you can choose to use either the standard mileage or, or rate or actual expenses. So note one reason for that might be like they're basically saying uh, if you, so once again, if you want to use the standard mileage rate for a car or truck you own, you must choose it in the first year the car is available for use in your business. And so, so that means you can't use the, the direct I mean the direct write-off method and then switch to the mileage method after the, that first year of business. And one reason that might be is because you can imagine in these situations where they have these accelerated depreciation methods, which may be limited for an automobile, but like a 179 deduction, you're already using a double declining balance for, for depreciation of the car, which is a front loaded depreciation, more depreciation at the beginning than the end of the life and special depreciation methods. You can imagine people would, would want to then, in the first year of operations, take that accelerated depreciation and then switch over to the mileage method, which might be higher after the depreciation has already been consumed in the first year with these accelerated depreciation methods. You can imagine that's probably what they're trying to avoid happening here, saying, no, you can't do that. You have to, if you want to use the mileage method, you've got to use it You've, you've got to use it starting in the first year. That means that you might come out to a situation where the actual method is higher than the mileage method in the first year, possibly because of accelerated depreciation. But you, you also want to think what's going to be the best method over the life of the vehicle, which can be a little bit more confusing to calculate when you're trying to determine which method to use. In any case, if you choose to use the standard mileage rate for a car, 
you lease, uh, you must use it for the entire lease period. So now we're talking about a leasing situation, including renewals. So standard mileage rate not allowed. You cannot use the standard mileage rate if you, one, operate five or more cars at the same time. So now you're not using like your, your car, you, you got five or more in operation. So they're gonna, they're gonna say, hey, you need to not do the standard mileage rate in that case. Two, claim a depreciation deduction using any method other than straight line. So for example, the, the acres and the makers. And notice the straight line would be a, a, a depreciation method where you're allocating like a like the same amount of depreciation over a certain time frame. So usually uh, people use like a makers, which is an accelerated time frame. And again, the idea would be that if you use an accelerated depreciation, they're concerned that you're going to be overstating the depreciation one year, getting a big expense and then switching to the mileage method. So you're kind of double dipping. That's kind of the, the issue. So three, claim a section 179 deduction so that's the same issue i was talking about why you, you can imagine they would they would limit that because if you were able to take a 179 deduction which is an accelerated depreciation in year one and then switch to a mileage method after that then you would have got this big deduction in year one because they accelerated the depreciation so they you would see you would think they wouldn't want you to do that claim the special depreciation same thing that's a huge lump sum depreciation in the first year five claimed actual car expenses for a car you leased or six are a rural uh, mail carrier who received a qualified reimbursement so that's kind of a more specialized area for you rural mail carriers out there <laughs> parking fee but obviously if you got reimbursed you know that would you know you got reimbursed so you would think that it wouldn't be an expense because you got reimbursed. so parking fees and tolls in addition to using the standard mileage rate, you can deduct any business related parking fees and tolls. Parking fees you pay to park your car at your place of work are non-deductible uh, commuting expenses. So actual expenses. If you do not choose to use the standard mileage rate, you may be able to deduct your actual car or truck expenses. Tip, if you qualify to use both methods, Figure your deduction both ways to see which gives you a larger deduction. So that might happen, for example, in the first year for, of, of you putting the car on the books, you want to figure which would be better. But remember, it's not just the first year you're dealing with because you're kind of locked into the methods, at least to some degree, that, are, that you're going to pick. So you want to think about, you know, multiple years, what's going to be best. Actual car expenses include the cost of the following items. So if you're doing the actual expenses, instead of just using the mileage rate where you would ask someone for their total mileage, miles and so on, and in essence, multiply that times the rate, we have to get all the actual stuff, which is depreciation, which means we have to put the, the car on the books as a fixed asset and use depreciation methods to depreciate it. You got the garage rent, gas, insurance, lease payments, uh, licenses, oil, parking fees, registration, repairs, tires, and tolls, all this car related stuff. So if you use your vehicle for both business and personal purpose, you must divide your expenses between business and personal use. That's where it gets messy. So you can divide your expense based on the miles driven for each purpose. So you could take like a ratio of some kind. You, you're gonna say, well, I drive my car you're going to look at your total expenses and say, well, I drive my car 80% business or something like that. And it's usually not going to be perfect because you're trying to estimate and it's difficult because you use it for personal and you use it for business. You commute as well as use it for other things. Example. 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 Uh, you are the sole proprietor of a flower shop. You drove your van 20,000 miles during the year. 16,000 miles were for delivering flowers to customers and 4,000 miles were for personal use, including commuting miles. So you can claim only 80%, which is the 16,000 divided by the total miles of 20 uh, of the cost of operating your van as business expense. So when you're trying to do this as a tax preparer, you're often going to have to work with clients and to get these numbers and be like, well, what do you think the total what are the total miles that you drove on the year you know and how much of that well how many of those miles do you think are going to be how much how much of those miles are business miles and you want to be able to track this and of course document it 
as well you can because these deductions are going to be a big deduction oftentimes. So if, if you had an audit, you'd most likely be questioned possibly about car and auto because those are some of the big items. So you want to get it as accurate as you can, but obviously we are using an estimate which is inherently going to have some estimentation in it. <laughs> so more information. For more information about the rules for claiming car and truck expenses, you can see publication 463. Uh, reimbursing your employees for expenses. You can generally deduct the amount you reimburse your employees for car and truck expenses as well. The reimbursement you deduct and the manner in which you deduct it depend on part in part on whether you reimburse the expenses under the accountable plan or a non-accountable plan. Uh, so notice that if you have employees, then if they're driving their car and truck expenses, like and you reimburse them for the car and truck expenses then that could be like a like a like a benefit in some ways right instead of giving them a payment and calling it like w-2 wages where you'd have to be dealing with where you'd have to be dealing with self-employment tax and all all that kind of stuff so the reimbursement method uh could be good because you're providing the car and you, or or you're reimbursing them for for that and if you can if you can give them a payment for the use of their car and whatnot without without having taxes applied to it that would be a favorable thing for them and therefore a favorable thing for you as a business but you got to make sure that you do that in a plan that may, that is uh, appropriate that, that's a qualified plan so you so expenses under an accountable plan or a non-accountable plan so for more details on that if you want to dive into that in more detail you can see chapter 11 of publication 535 that chapter explains accountable and non-accountable plans and tells you whether to report the reimbursement on your employees form w-2